Good morning, everyone. It is a very, 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 very cold day in Southern California. Like, I've never seen snow before, and where I lived, it snowed for like an hour, and it melted, and it was like really spooky, because I've never seen it before. And it was kind of dry, but really cold, and then it melted, and I got really, really, really cold. No, really, it happened. And like, I don't know, it was just so cold and spooky looking, and I did not like it. Like, I feel like it's weird. I don't like it. And that's okay. I don't have to like it. You know? I mean, it's cold. It's really cold. Today, I am going to read a... Well, I've already recorded it, actually. And I'm thinking of re-recording it, so I might use today's recording. Technically, today's recording. Um, instead. It's called Che Notte. That translates from Italian into That Night. Now, my dad and I spent a lot of time in the hospital. Like, a lot. These creepy pustas were like our only form of entertainment. No joke. Because then, you know, sometimes you can't read them because they want to block you from reading them and that's kind of a dick move. Because I have nothing to do and nothing to watch and you won't let me watch my Netflix because you suck. So how did I entertain my father while we were in the emergency room for like eight hours or stuck in the hospital for like three months? You know, because I was with them like all the time, even overnight. Hi, Zoe. It's Zoe. You might be able to hear her purr and lick her lips. I think you can hear her. Um, oh, bless you. So anyway, oh, bless you. Go back to your blankie. Where are your blinkies, Ozo? Is my Zoe so bird? <laughs> so anyway, how did we entertain ourselves? I would read him books. Well, actually, I would read him creepy pastas because we've already gone through like books and audiobooks. And it was okay. Sometimes we'd get bored. Sometimes he'd get bored. Sometimes it's like, what are we doing here? There's nothing on TV. And Steve Harvey is only entertaining, you know, for like, he can be entertaining for like five hours. But like, when you get to that point, he stops being entertaining because you've seen so much of him. And the only thing else on is Fox News. And that's a nightmare all by itself. Huh. <sighs> Oh, one time I dated this guy and we were like talking about old horror movies and one of my favorites was The Tingler, what I did not like because I can't stand anyone touching my neck or sometimes it's even hard to wear a necklace because I, I don't know, I just can't have things around my neck. And um, well I know why I can't have things around my neck, but you don't. That's what matters. So, it's just, just weird, just really weird, and, um, hey Zoe, she's very distracting and very fuzzy, you should all love Zoe, love Zoe, and her little tingly bell, oh yeah, so like, Hi, Zoe. Back to the tingler. Oh, look at my Zoe. And, um, good girl. So, like, my dad, he would do this thing where he would grab the back of my neck, and it would really freak me out because I can't have anything, like, touch my neck. 
So, I'm talking to this guy about the Tingler, and you know, the date has gone sour. It has officially gone south. In my mind. In his head, he still thinks it's a good date, but I know in my head, in my heart, that this is not right, and I don't like- oh, I don't like it. And he said some weird stuff that I'm not comfortable with, so it's done. I don't plan on seeing him again. Oh, so so. Sorry. So, you know, my dad, he grabbed the back of my neck and I'd go, ah! Well, not like, well, it was actually a lot more petrified, but, you know, that's, that's the best I can do. And, um, he said, the tingler, scream, scream, it will save you. That's what the guy that I was dating said. My dad would just laugh because I, I screamed. And I was like, well, yeah, monsters that feed off fear, they're particularly frightening because, you know, you're so afraid. And they make you afraid. And then you're even more scared and they get stronger. And you're even more afraid. And he's like, well, what's another thing you can think of that feeds off fear? So I said, Republicans. And I found out he was a Republican. So yeah, that date went from South to Souther, like any Souther, and I'd expect to be getting sushi in hell. Hell's probably a sushi bar and a good one. I mean, everybody goes there probably. I'm just, well, I'm, I like sushi bar hell. That's my, that's my chosen hell. So, Kea Note. Kea Note. Kea Note. I just love saying it, like, all the ways I can say it, because it's so much fun to say. This one was actually one of my dad's favorites, because... It was just a lot of little things that, by themselves, don't make any sense. Like, I read it to him and I gave him the translation of it because it's that night. I know a bit of Italian because I had to practice singing songs in Italian because it's fun. And it's right there on the creepypasta. So, yay! And my dad thought, were they molested? Was there a break-in? She's afraid of the dark, but my daughter likes giving me good ones with good twists. And maybe it's aliens, but what if it's not? But it seems like it is, because it's something she'd do, she being me. And, you know, my dad loved twists. That's why I always like things with a good twist to them. Like another one I want to read, but it's incredibly graphic and disturbing. I read that once while we were in the ER. It was New Year's Eve, not last year, but the year before. So I think it was, no, maybe it could have been 2017. Yeah, it would have been 2017 because he spent almost the entire winter of 2016 in the hospital, like the beginning half of the winter in the hospital. So, so it was the emergency room, ER, and we're reading this and my dad thought, man, that's a good one. I can't believe he did that. And I said, no, dad, you gotta pay attention. I'm gonna read it again from, from the end. And then he's like, holy mackerel well actually he said holy shit and i was like i know and he said right and i was all like i'm hungry and he said me too it was kind of nice because then we actually yeah he was in the er and my birthday is on january 2nd it's national hangover day i know never really get any parties 
I'm sad. But I got to spend that birthday with my dad in the hospital because we finally found a gluten-free cake. I have celiac. It sucks. I kind of really want a burrito, but I don't know if I want to pay a Chipotle price. I don't know how much they cost, but I think it costs a lot. And I don't know. I'm just really trigger shy when it comes to eating out because I've gotten sick a few times and they were really bad. And anyone who knows, knows that, like, it sucks. Like, after you eat something, it's just even, like, a little bit, like, some crumbs in your salad because the guy was a dick and put croutons in your salad and just took them out instead of giving you a fresh salad. Even though you made it clear to the waiter and the manager you can't eat it, that's why you don't want croutons. Please don't put croutons on my next salad. I was sick for, like, two months. Sick for two months! It sucked balls and not in a good way I need to cut that out because that was really inappropriate um let's see oh maybe I'll leave that in maybe I'll leave that in um actually the intro to the past has gotten more views in the past couple of weeks and I'm really proud of that so maybe I'll try to be more candid and try not to curse because sometimes I can't help myself. But yeah, we ate gluten-free strawberry shortcake that took all day to find because only one Ralph's Market in our area carries it. And I didn't want to bake a cake. I didn't have time to bake a cake. I just wanted to buy a cake and eat it with them. So he sang me happy birthday, I cried, he cried, he said sorry, we're in the hospital again on your birthday, and I said, it's okay, cause we're together and that's what matters. And that's true, that was what mattered. And he really liked the cake. And he really liked this story and being together and enjoying these things is what matters. You know, I bet plenty of parents wouldn't have been as embracing of the spooky as he is, as he was. And it matters, it matters so much to me that, you know, he didn't call me weird. He didn't say there was something wrong with me. He enjoyed it with me. I mean, he watched TV with me. He always wanted to know what we were watching, what we were reading. My dad was really hands-on in that way because he never wanted us to, you know, be freaked out or see something on TV and not have an explanation for it. Or, you know, be traumatized or something. So he always either watched it first read it first or watched it with me so you know he knows what's going on because the TV's not a babysitter the TV's not a teacher you know he's the parent not the TV and he took that really seriously and I still think that was a good way for him to do parenting I mean were there awkward moments where suddenly there's a bunch of sexual stuff I probably shouldn't describe? Or... I mean, the grotesque violence wasn't that bad in most cases, but you know, seeing a, a hoo-ha, well, a boy hoo-ha on TV was like, WTF and dad would be all like well that's the natural part of the body and we can watch something else and I'm like okay we watched a lot of the history channel so we only had like a few of those moments I can think of and I don't know I think that's what I think that's one of his little laurels in parenting 
You know, I only got freaked out a few times watching TV. But he was always there to explain it to me. He even watched the anime with me that I like to watch. And he's like, is that, is that guy really playing guitar? And I'm like, yeah, he's playing it real good, right? He's like, damn, I didn't know those... <laughs> I didn't know the Jabs could play guitar that good. He's awesome. And I was like, right? And it was just the theme song for Descendants of Darkness. And yes, I love that. And that is like a really good like, guitar playing person right there. And um, yeah. So instead of talking about Kei and Note, because I don't want to give it away, I really do want you to enjoy it. I talked about things that related to Keanote in our lives, and you got to hear the cat purr and tagalag. Tagalagging is what my dad called it when they would shake their tag, or shake their heads to make noise with their tag or bells or collars. So they would tagalag. Mojo, our cat, we call him sometimes Mujeta. He had six paws, four legs, six paws, awesome cat. And he would tag a leg like all the time. If he wanted something, tag a leg. If he was hungry, which is like all the time, tag a leg. <sighs> you know, I've never had Chipotle and I don't know if I ever will. Because I'm hungry now, too. Is Chipotle good? Is it worth the price? Let me know. Because, oh, maybe I could try to get that sponsor like everyone else has to now. Well, it's not like I really made much at or anything. I mean, I got a few dollars from... I got a donation once or twice. It was pretty cool. That was back in the day when I was doing other stuff. And, huh? Eh. Who knows? Maybe I should try to get a sponsor for Chipotle and do like something with that. Because having to eat out with like, with your body not being able to like tolerate gluten and like freaking out and attacking itself, it's like, it, it makes everything like really a lot more well people who are allergic to peanuts or strawberries or I don't know blueberries I think some people are allergic to blueberries they'd understand because it's like or eggs dairy how do you cook it where do you cook it is it a clean pan is it a shared grill what else is cooked on the grill you know there's so many questions you have to ask and sometimes people get mad if you say, could you please ask whoever prepares my food to wear clean gloves? Because sometimes, you know, they go from, that's why you shouldn't get Domino's or any pizzas really, because they don't always use clean gloves or clean, well, their hands are clean, but then, you know, they touch bread. They touch an area where bread has been. They touch an area where, you know, the, reg the regular dough has been. And then, you know, they start throwing stuff onto your pizza, all your toppings. So that gets into the toppings. So if someone like me ordered the gluten-free pizza, what if that pizza wasn't prepared properly? In a clean station, on a clean wax paper, with clean hands, and then there's no guarantee that the toppings are technically clean. Quote, unquote, clean. And you can still get sick from it. Maybe it's pretty bad, maybe it's not so bad, maybe you regret all of your decisions in life at that exact moment. But sometimes you really want a pizza. And you don't want to have to go to the store, spend $10 for a small personal pizza that only has one topping or is only cheese. And then you make this tiny little $10 personal pizza and you get maybe two regular slices of pizza out of it. Like what the hell? That's highway robbery. That's what my dad always said, highway robbery. 
is he would ask about prices because you know he was blind he couldn't see anymore so he'd ask about prices he'd ask me what I want or where I could eat and you know he always you know listen to my complaints or listen to my questions and then he'd ask the same questions for me he'd say well my daughter has celiac she can't you know eat gluten it makes her really sick you know can you tell me how you cook the food how you put it together he's a, he's a really good dad in that respect which is why I didn't mind being with him in the hospital. You know, I could spend the night with him most of the time because, you know, you can only lay on that little cot so much without your back hurting, and you do eventually have to go home to shower. Or shower there. Sometimes I showered there. You know, if he was like really, really, really sick, I'd always bring like maybe a week's worth of clothing because I would be there for the whole week. Especially when he had to go to UCLA. I'd bring like a, week's of, a week of clothes, yogurt, so I could live off yogurt. And there's actually a Ralph's down there. It's really nice Ralph's. I really recommend it. Sometimes I'd go out for an hour or two. I'd get him something. Like a, sometimes I'd get him a snack. Or, you know, I'd go to the Hammer Museum, that's just a, maybe a block down, but it's an L.A. block, so it like takes 15 minutes to walk there. It was really nice, because then I could, you know, tell him what I saw at the museum, tell him about being at the store, because he always took me grocery shopping, that was our thing. You know, we'd ask, if, you know, he'd ask about prices, we'd talk about prices, how they differ here from there. You know, the quality of the meat, quality of the goods. I mean, everyone has something that they enjoy, and we enjoyed a lot of things, like a lot of normal things, not just these spooky, serial killer, super murderer, monster stuff. I'm just letting you know we weren't crazy. Or... Maybe we're just a little mad, but everyone's a little mad. So thank you for listening to this, whoever you people are. Why don't you give me a comment, say hi, and I'll say hi back. And let's get this show on the road and get to Keanote. Bye. Who's it by? Huh. It's... Oh yeah, I got this from the official website, so not all the time, sometimes you just get them and they're just anonymous, so I can't exactly announce it in the video recording for the intro to Keanote. Keanote, because it's the wrong way to say it, but I like say it with a California accent. Well, actually, this would be more like a Silicon Valley or Valley Girl accent, where everything Sounds like a question because it all has an inflection. And it's like, oh my god, whatever. Don't you dare, like, don't you dare harsh on my mellow and, like, rip on my accent because it's, like, totally normal where I come from. Oh my god, what's wrong with you? No, really, I don't talk like that. It, it hurts me sometimes to do it. But I like doing it because it hurts. You know? Okay. Everybody, bye!